I'm going to talk about um, setting up your data mine to do an absorber dyno. And an absorber dyno would be like a water break or an eddy current. And just like with the inertia dyno, you want to start, if you're starting from scratch, with a file that matches your logger. This would be like for a four channel, this one would be for a four channel. This one here would be for our data mite mini. That's current. Here's for our older black box two. And these two happen to be for our old data mite two. So and when I said four channel, this is a really old data mite, a four channel data mite, and same with these Yamaha. So we have our silver box, our data mite three USB, and this is a good example file for it. And I'm going to open that. You can see we're on the main screen. First thing you want to do is you want to set up your dyno specs. And you can see this is for an inertia dyno. It's got an inertia wheel here and all sorts of stuff. And we're going to assume we're going to set this up for a direct drive, let's say Stuska dyno. And the torque measurement, this is the critical thing to set here, is going to be a torque arm dyno, which means you've got an arm out to the side connected to the outside case of the dyno, and that arm is where the torque is being measured. So I would say, yep, I said no there, but yes, I do want to do that. As you can see, all those inertia dyno specs go away now. And here we're going to say it's an engine direct drive, and you can see the gear ratio gets disabled. So dyno RPM and engine RPM are the same. Back out of this screen and say, yes, I want to save my changes, and yes, I want to save them as the master dyno specs. They've been updated and saved. And now you can see we're going to start getting some warnings here that We've said we've got an absorber dyno, but there's no torque channel specified. We're going to fix that here in a second. Now you can see here we made that change, and it's actually warning us over here with this little red thing about click here. And this is an important thing to uh, note. Um, when, it, when the program doesn't think something looks right, it's going to have a little note here. If you click on that note, it's going to bring you up in a notepad, and the program is going to try and tell you some things to check here. And it's going to say, um, okay, it's probably going to say in here that we don't have a torque channel specified. But there could be all sorts of little notes here that your correction factor looks wrong because your uh, weather station is not being uh, working correctly or whatever. Uh, but let's now click on data mite specs. And the important thing when you got an inertia dyno. I'm sorry, with an absorber dyno, brake dyno, is you need one of the analog channels specified as torque. And for most channels, oil pressure, fuel pressure, things like that, you can put them on any one of these analog channels you want. But in the quick start information, it's showing you that typically torque you want to set up as the very first analog channel. So we're going to take the first analog channel here, mark it yes for use, go over here and click on our uh, dyno settings here for dyno torque. And the first thing you do is you specify dyno torque. The name of the channel can be pretty much anything you want, but we're going to keep it simple, just TQ, capital letters. Down in here are your calibration factors for your torque channel. Easiest thing to do is put signal based on 0 to 5 volts. Make sure you check that. That makes the most sense for most people. And this is where you would type in or read from your data logger your um, two points that make up the calibration curve to figure out how many volts is equal to how many foot-pounds of torque. And what you want to do, if you're going to use the read function, which is probably about the only way to do it, you want to make sure that you've already been able to establish communications and picked out the right COM port and stuff on your data mite 3 USB. But if you have established communications at some time in the past, or you know things are setting up right, you can go ahead and do this calibration. First thing would be put in um, a low value of torque. Maybe it would be zero foot-pounds with no weights on your arm. And we'll get into this in detail a little bit more. And so you have zero foot-pounds being hung on your dyno. And here we're going to go down and we're going to click on the read button. And the program is going to go out and read the data mite and figure out how many volts is there for zero pounds, zero foot pounds being put on the dyno. And then you're going to hang your weights and figure out the weight 
times the lever arm, if it's two feet out, and you have hanging 50 pounds on a two-foot arm out from the center of the dyno, that'd be 100 foot-pounds. So let's say that's what you're doing. You're putting 100 foot-pounds on there, and we're going to read what 100 foot-pounds does to your voltage reading. So zero foot-pounds put out 1.257 volts. 100 foot-pounds puts out 2.745 volts. And you can see this; these numbers are being stored up here in our calibration. And we're going to keep the specs, and now we've got a good torque calibration here. So uh, what I should do now is, well, let's, uh, let's just see what happens. See if we're getting, once you do your torque calibration, they're asking, do you want to save things as a mash? I said yes. You should be able to go into your, look at your analog channels, and here's torque that we put in. And you can see we're still hanging our 100 pounds on or 50 pounds at two feet, and we're getting 100 foot-pounds of torque. And now you should be able to see if you go down to zero, we should be able to get, as you can see, we're very close to zero. So our calibration is working, and you should be able to hang anything you on there you want, and you should be able to get the correct reading here for torque. But anyway, um, so that's how you calibrate the torque channel, and that's true for pretty much any kind of channel. Uh, if you had some funny pressure channel or something, that's how you do it there also. So we've got our torque channel calibrated. We've got our engine and dyno RPM set up here. Now, if the program knows it's direct drive, if it finds dyno, you've specified we're looking at both dyno and engine RPM. If you're going to engine RPM 1 with your RPM input. This is on your box. Uh, RPMs A. You want to get rid of this because it's going to look and see if it sees dyno RPM being recorded, it's going to use that for the dyno RPM. If it can't find dyno RPM, then it's going to go up to engine RPM and use that. So you'd want to turn off dyno RPM unless you had the dyno RPM channel coming in on RPMs B, then you could turn this on and it would work. But if it's going into RPMs A, then you want to use this one here. Oh, want to turn that on. So, and then you can obviously set up your other channels here, your accelerometer or your weather, we we'll say internal sensors and your thermocouples and such. Now, another thing you might want to do is I'm going to click on current readings up here at the top. It says, do you want to save your changes? Yep. Is you might want to, and I've done it already, but you might want to set up your gauges here to have things make sense for what you're doing. For example, uh, with the inertia dyno, this could have been dyno RPM and engine RPM over here. To set up torque on this round gauge, you click on gauge settings, and you go over here and pick what you want on there, and you see we could even have horsepower down in these channels and such. But we want torque there, and you can set what range you want it to be in or user specified if you want to set up some special ranges not in this list. And we're going to say let's go 0 to 600 foot pounds. And you can see we've got torque there. And we can even put horsepower in kilowatts down here. Kilowatts being the metric version of horsepower. Or you could put some pressures or fuel flow or whatever down here. But horsepower is kind of nice. A lot of people want to see their horsepower. We can't do horsepower with an inertia dyno because it's, we only really know the horsepower accurately after the test and we go through all the data very to figure out the acceleration rates but what you do to get these working is those are called bar gauges and like we showed there you pick out of the list what you want to show horsepower and the range and we picked out kilowatts and the range there keep options and now we got these things set up here too so you might want to fine-tune your gauges here based on the type of dyno this being for an absorber dyno so we'll back out of this screen here, go back to the main screen, and I'm going to show you a couple sections of the user manual right now that help explain some other things. The user manual is actually can be quite a bit better than uh, these demo movie files. It just takes a little bit more effort to go through the reading and stuff. But things are organized better in the user manual for understanding things. And you can see here we're on example 4.2, analyzing dyno data. Um, 
it looks like it's on page 161, and it talks about, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to be on example uh, 4.3, running an absorber dyno test. It happens to be for a data mite 2, but it's very similar for a data mite 3 also. And you can see in here, a lot of pictures and stuff. And we'll get to this in a little bit, but here's figure 4.45. Nice little overview of how we run an uh, absorber dyno test. And we'll get that in into this in more depth in the next movie.